If you want consistent sales, you have to be consistent. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body candles by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. And today we are going to be talking about how to be consistent when it comes to your reselling tasks so that you can have consistent sales. This is the first video I'm doing in a series for those who are participating in the Summer Listing Challenge. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can check out this video right here. But basically this week we are preparing for a Summer Listing Challenge that's gonna be happening next week. And I invite you to join us. Essentially all it is, is you are going to create a set of goals. For me, my three goals were to list 20 new items to Poshmark every day, to relist any items that are ending every day on eBay, and then to cross list 10 items from Poshmark to eBay, Kitizen, and Mercari. Because these are habits that I wanna develop for my reselling business because I know that that three punch combo of listing new items, relisting, and cross listing, those are really the most effective ways to make sales. And so for the summer listing challenge, what you would do is you would create your own set of goals centered around those three pillars of listing, relisting and cross-listing and you would basically get to join this great community of other resellers who are going to be trying to do the same thing as you. They're trying to build those habits in those three arenas of their reselling life so that they can have more consistent sales. And there will be prizes, there will be guest appearances by other resellers who have a lot of knowledge to drop as far as some of these different topics are concerned, and it'll just be a great time. So if you're interested in joining, definitely check out the link below. It is a Google form and that's how you can sign up to join us. It's absolutely free. There are no ties or strings attached. And there's also a Facebook group for those who are participating in the challenge if you want that community who's going to help bring you up and just help you meet your goals. So today's topic is how to be consistent in those three things that I talked about, listing, relisting, and cross-listing, so that you can increase your sales. And make sure that you stay tuned until the end of this video because there's a really special guest who's gonna join us and talk to us about one of the tools that you can use to help you be as efficient as possible, especially when it comes to cross-listing. So let's talk about the areas in which you need to be consistent in order to succeed as a reseller. I think that there are a lot of different things that you need to be consistent on. In this video, we're gonna focus on three of them, and they are the things that I keep talking about, listing, relisting, and cross-listing. I also think that you need to be consistent with things like sharing your Poshmark closet, with things like sourcing good inventory, and finally with shipping. It is important to be consistent with those three things as well. We're not really gonna focus on those three things as much in this specific video, but I do have a lot of other videos on my channel about some of those topics, so definitely make sure that if you're not subscribed yet that you do subscribe, and you can check out some of my older videos. But we are gonna focus on on those three first things that I talked about, which is listing, relisting, and cross-listing. So first, let's just talk about a few general tips when it comes to building good habits. Believe it or not, we all have habits in our lives. A lot of us have really bad habits, and it's because it's something that we've practiced over and over again. We've just practiced doing the wrong things or bad things that aren't really useful to us. But the good news is we can just as easily build new habits. But it is going to take some work, and it is going to take some intentionality on your end. End. So the first thing I would do when it comes to this work of building up good habits is make sure that you are focused on the task at hand. Some things that I do to make sure that I'm as focused as possible are to make sure that I get rid of all distractions. For me, that means to silence my phone, to turn on like the do not disturb function on my phone and on my Apple watch. That way I'm not receiving texts or seeing any DMs on my Instagram at that moment because a lot of times, especially let's say while I am photographing, I'm using my phone. So I have my phone in my hand and it's really easy to see a lot of these notifications coming in and it's really easy to get distracted. But just that simple act of putting your phone on do not disturb and not allowing your phone to show you those notifications, it can really keep you focused in a way that maybe you wouldn't be able to if you didn't turn on that do not disturb button on your phone. I also try to coordinate with my husband in a way where either I am trying to accomplish these tasks when my kids are not home. If you don't have any time alone without kids and perhaps you can schedule those tasks for when your kids are napping or after your kids go down for the evening or maybe you can you know find someone who's willing to watch your kids for an hour or two so that you can knock out some of these reseller tasks that just have to get done kids are amazing but they're also huge distractions when you're trying to get stuff done it's a constant barrage of i'm hungry i fell down and i hurt 
it myself. I'm bored. Whatever it is, do your very best to schedule a block of time where you are free of distractions and you're able to focus on the task at hand. And that takes us to my second tip, which is block scheduling. Block scheduling is a little bit different than like scheduling out minute by minute, hour by hour, what you're gonna be doing for that day. But really what it means is like you have a two hour block in your calendar and you're saying in these two hours, I'm going to knock out blank. And ideally, they're all kind of centered around the same type of task. So maybe you have a two hour chunk of your day that you have scheduled out. And in that two hour chunk, that's when you're going to do all of your reselling tasks. So that's when you're going to do things like photograph and steam and inventory. That's not the time for you to respond to Instagram comments or for you to do some like retail arbitrage. You're allotting, you know, this block of time to do these specific tasks. And by doing Doing that again it helps you focus in on specific things so you're not going to be tempted to do retail arbitrage up here because you know you have a time allotted for it later in the day honestly i did not do the best job explaining block scheduling but i am going to link a video down below from someone who i really love watching for productivity hacks her name is jordan page she has a great youtube channel so i will make sure to link that video on block scheduling below as well the next tip I have is to have a designated spot where you do everything. So maybe in order for you to share your Poshmark closet as quickly and efficiently as possible, you need to just have like a space where you can have your cup of coffee, you can have your tablet with your little, what is that called? The pen with like the, the you know, you touch, I don't know, whatever. Stylus, stylus, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> maybe you have, you know, your little area with your stylus and your tablet because that's how you share your Poshmark closet. Maybe you have speakers because you're gonna listen to some relaxing music or to your favorite podcast while you share. I don't know what it is, but have a designated area where you do certain things because it kind of gets you in the mode to do the task that you associate with that little station. Um, the same goes for shipping, right? Like you wanna make sure that you have an organized and clean shipping station that has all of your supplies because there's nothing that will slow you down or deter you from getting your job done in the most efficient way possible than like realizing that you don't have any more poly mailers or realizing that you're out of uh, printing labels. Those are the kinds of things that kind of force you to stop what you're doing, kind of get you out of your groove because now you have to sit there and order more boxes or order more labels. It just gets you out of your mode of productivity and it's hard to get back into it. So you wanna make sure that all of these different stations that you have to do your different reselling tasks, whether it's photographing, whether it's listing, whether it's shipping, whether it's sharing, whatever it may be, you wanna make sure that you have everything that you need before you begin the task at hand so that you can go from start to finish without any unnecessary interruptions. Another tip to creating good habits as a reseller is to do the same thing every day. So if you want to build this habit of sharing your Poshmark closet first thing in the morning and you have your little station where you can have your cup of coffee and you can, you know, whatever, then you wanna do the same thing every day. Set an alarm for the same time every morning get up, take care of your morning routine stuff, and then make sure that you get to sharing your closet the same time every day. Create a routine and then stick to that routine and try to do it the same way every single day so that it really becomes a habit. Finally, when it comes to tips on how to create good, consistent habits as a reseller, make sure that you are setting attainable goals for yourself that you can actually reach so that you're not discouraged before you even begin. So for example, if you are just starting off as a reseller, do not set the goal to have 20 new listings up every day because most likely you're going to fail somewhere along the way and you're just going to be discouraged. But instead, start with saying, I'm going to commit to getting two new listings up a day. That's much more feasible, especially for someone who's just beginning and every step of the process is going to take you a little bit longer than it would take me because I've been doing this for much longer. So the amount of time that it's going to take you to get two new listings up every day from finding those items photographing those items, creating the listings for those items, it's gonna take you the same amount of time to do those two listings as it probably would for me to do like 10 or 15 because I've developed a process on how I'm going to do certain things because I know how to price certain things without having to look up comps. So you wanna make sure that you're setting realistic goals for yourself so that as you go to create habits for how to achieve these goals, they're actually attainable and you're going to succeed each and every day as you practice building these habits and that's gonna encourage you to keep doing it rather than, oh, I said I was gonna get 50 new listings up. Oh, I said I was gonna photograph 50 new things today. And I wasn't able to do it six days out of the seven days this week. So I'm a failure and I suck. 
No. Yes, shoot for the stars, but shoot for, I don't know, this one that's like closer to you, <laughs> one that you can actually grab. Okay, so let's talk about the three tenets of being successful as a reseller and talk about how to create some consistency for yourself as a reseller when it comes to these things. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is listing. I really think that across all of the reselling platforms, one thing that helps is to list new items every single day, whether it's one new item or 50 new items. The goal is to list something new on the different platforms that you sell on every single day. But in order to do that, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen beforehand. Like you have to have the inventory, you have to have photographs of that inventory, and only then can you actually list those items. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do for yourself is create a weekly schedule of when you're going to do things like source inventory, inventory and photograph inventory. For some people, it works to, like I said, have a weekly schedule where they know every Monday, that's the day that they're going to go thrifting because maybe Monday is the first day that they release the new color tag at Goodwill or something like that. Or maybe Monday is the only day that, you know, their sitter can come to watch the kids for three hours. And that's the best time for you to go out kids free to a Goodwill, Salvation Army, other local thrift store, what have you. And then maybe Wednesday is the best day in your schedule to photograph and inventory those items. I don't know what's gonna work for you, but what I do know is that in order to successfully list a consistent number of new listings every day, you're also going to have a schedule for how you source that inventory and photograph that inventory so that you can get that stuff listed. When it comes to listing daily, you're gonna wanna create some sort of system for yourself. I'll tell you really quickly what mine looks like. Like I said earlier, I'm trying to list 20 new items every day. That is my goal for the listing portion of the Summer Listing Challenge. And the way that I'm doing that is every day I am photographing 20 new items that later I'm going to list. I try to photograph them when kids aren't home, but that's also something I can do when they are home. I'm able to photograph and still converse with my kids in the background. I can, you know, keep an eye on them and make sure that they're not getting into stuff that they're not supposed to. So I can do that when kids are home. I can also edit the pictures when the kids are home. It's really easy for me to be on Google Snapseed or using PicTap Go. Again, while I'm conversing with my kids, while we're watching a show together, after I photograph, I edit my pictures. And by the way, later this week, I will have a video designated just to take taking photographs and editing. So if that's one of your pain points as a reseller, I got you. So I will edit my pictures. And then when all of my 20 items are edited and ready to be listed, I will create drafts on my phone. And then I will actually create the listings from my laptop. This was actually a suggestion that someone on my Instagram gave to me because I did have a post not too long ago where I was complaining about a lot of like wrist and hand pain and it's still pretty bad, especially in my left wrist. Um, some people were saying they feel like it might be carpal tunnel syndrome and you know, just some different things. And it comes from being on my phone all the time, especially when it comes to creating listings, when it comes to sharing, all that kind of stuff. So one thing that one of my Instagram followers suggested that I thought was brilliant, I don't know why I haven't been doing this all along, but she suggested creating drafts on my phone. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how I create a draft. I am in my bathroom. I'm literally sitting on my toilet, but I promise I'm not going to the bathroom. But I am in my cell portion of the app, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, basically go through the motions of creating a listing. So let's do this sweater. So here we go. I'm going to do the front and then the back, which it's not in that order in my phone, but that's just how I like to show it on Poshmark. So I do the front and the back, and then I'll just include everything else. So that takes care of the pictures in my phone of this sweater. I press next. There's the cover photo next again and now all i'm going to do is put in the brand which is j crew factory i'm going to press done and then i'm going to press in the top left corner where it says cancel save draft and then voila what's going to happen is you're going to see it in your drafts and the beautiful thing is now you can go onto your computer and you can look for your drafts there and complete them and now what i've done is i've saved myself the time of having to type in all of these other things and hold my phone for an unnecessary amount of time and not only that but i type much faster on my laptop than i do on my phone so it's just another way to save some time and i don't know why these pictures are taking so long to upload so now you can say 
it's saved. And so if I want to access my drafts again from my phone app, I'm gonna press sell. And then right there at the top right corner, you can see where it says drafts. And there are all of my drafts for um, the different things that I'm gonna list later from my laptop. It is in a slightly different spot on your computer browser than it is on the app. I believe there's like a pull down menu in the top right corner of the um, website version of Poshmark on your computer. And it's like the second or third option. It says my drafts. And so that's where I go to finish the listing on my computer and it saves not only time but also a lot of unnecessary holding of the phone in my hand and i feel like it helps me just not get as distracted because i don't see notifications for things like instagram and other text messages like i do when i am holding my phone while listing so once all 20 of my drafts are on poshmark then what i do is after my kids are sleeping i'm able to go into poshmark and complete the listing and upload it so that i have my 20 new listings up for the day. Yes, they go up really late at night, but that's the way that I get it done. Moving on to relisting, we're going to talk about three strategies when it comes to relisting and being consistent with this as a daily tool as a reseller. The one commitment that I made as far as the summer listing challenge when it comes to relisting is I committed to ending and selling similar on any listings on eBay that are ending that day. So if you're not familiar with eBay, what they do is when you list an item on eBay, it is live for 30 30 days and at the end of that 30 day period typically they will automatically relist that item for you that does mean they're going to charge you for a listing fee if you don't have enough free listings to cover it and when they automatically relist it for you you don't lose your watchers or anything like that but when they relist it it's just the same listing that's being carried over into the next month it's not considered a new listing so i'm going to show you in this next clip how i actually end the listing before i relist it so that to eBay, it seems like it's actually a brand new listing. As you can see, there are three tabs at the top, active, sold, and unsold. And underneath that, it says find with like the magnifying glass. That's where like, if you're looking for a particular item, for example, if you have a pair of Gap jeans cross-listed over on Poshmark and they sold on Poshmark and you wanna delete them, you can press find and you can type Gap search and then everything that you have from that brand will show up but that's not what we're here to do. We are gonna to look to the right of where it says find, where it says sort. And I want to sort it by the time ending soonest. And now I can see what items are going to end and for me, just automatically relist. So you can see that these Lucky Brand Open Toe Espadrilles, they're going to renew in 34 minutes and 16 seconds. And the ones underneath that are gonna renew in 36 minutes. So I definitely wanna go ahead and hurry up and relist these so that I can do that on my terms and not let eBay just do it on their own. If you look at um, the bottom of that listing, it'll show you how many views that item has had as well as how many watchers. But for me, like as soon as an item gets a watcher, I just go ahead and send them an offer to watcher. And if they don't accept it, then chances are they're just not going to at that point. So I just go ahead and completely end the listing and then relist it, even though it means I'm going to lose my views and watchers, but I'm okay with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the three button icon to the right of the listing. And you have all these different options. The first thing that I do is I end the listing and I usually just say, sorry, that's my friend telling me about um, baseball cards that he sells on eBay. But um, I go ahead and I say that the item is no longer available for sale. I'll end it. And now it is in like the unsold portion of your eBay store. But what I wanna do is now I wanna go ahead and instead of relisting the item because then eBay just recognizes it as the same old listing and it doesn't really count as like a new listing, I wanna go ahead and sell similar item. And once you hit that button, it's going to ask you if you wanna keep photos from the original listing, I do want to. And now what I can do is I can look and see if there are any adjustments or edits I wanna to make to this particular listing. I'm gonna fast forward you through this section here because basically all I do 
is change some things in the title, I change some things in the item specifics, I'm basically just trying to make this the best listing that I possibly can. I want to make sure that I'm utilizing as many keywords and utilizing good SEO within the listing title itself. I want to make sure that I am incorporating as many of the item specifics as possible because that's another thing that eBay likes to see within listings. Um, I'm just basically trying to optimize this listing so that as many people as possible will see it. Going back to item specifics, I think really I have put a lot of stuff and you can see like the little blue circle with the lightning bolt. That means that I have put in a lot of item specifics and I've done a good job. If the circle isn't like fully outlined, that means they think you should do some more. And I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. So now it's saying that I have a lot of good item specifics, the category, I'm going to keep it like that. Now price, I had a price at $24.99. It did not sell. It's also on all other platforms. So I think I'm going to go ahead and lower the price a little bit. I tend to ignore the online trending price because honestly, a lot of times it's not true, but I'm going to go ahead and drop it to $21.99. Um, I typically do not do free shipping. And to be honest, I think that I need to charge more than $7. So even though I lower the price, I'm going to raise the price just a little bit. I do think I can get this in a padded flat rate envelope. So I'm going to change that too. So you can see already just from doing this together, we were able to make a lot of adjustments. I want my handling time to be two days. I don't know why it says three. Um, but yeah, we were able to make a lot of changes that I think is really going to help. And so now we're going to go to list your item. And hopefully now that I have a new listing for this particular pair of wedges up, hopefully it sells for this price. And because of the fact that it's like a new listing, that'll also kind of boost me in the eBay algorithm. And yeah, hopefully I make a sale because of it. I mean, if I do, I will definitely keep you posted. So at the end of today's video, I'm going to show you footage of just what it was like for me to complete all of my goals. And you'll see how many listings I ended up doing this on for eBay. I It changes from day to day because you have a different number of items ending every single day. Maybe some days it'll be two listings that I have to relist. Maybe some days it'll be 30. I don't know. So you'll see at the end of the day how many I had to do. But it's a really great way to just kind of keep your listings fresh on eBay. And it's not a very difficult thing to build into your schedule because it doesn't actually take that much time. And the best thing about doing this on eBay, for me at least, is it gives you an opportunity to kind of just check on your listings. One, you can check to make sure that there are no errors in the listing itself. I have found so many dumb like spelling errors in my listing title or just like information that just straight up isn't correct. I have also been able to recheck comps, like maybe something is just listed for too high. And it gives me an opportunity every month to check the comps on that listing and see if I want to adjust my pricing. It also gives me an opportunity to maybe just, you know, modify some of the keywords that I'm using in my listing title and try out new ones because the ones that I had originally clearly weren't working. You know, the item didn't sell within the first 30 days that I had it listed. Poshmark has come out with a beautiful and amazing new way to relist items. I'm going to show you a video clip right here of what they've come out with to help you relist items so quickly on Poshmark. I'm going to show you right now how I am using Poshmark's newest feature of basically relisting. Um, it's so quick. It's so amazing. And for many of you who want to commit to relisting a certain number of items each day, maybe you don't sell on eBay or maybe you want to relist um, you know, items in addition to ending listings and selling similar on eBay, but on Poshmark, they've really made it so easy. So what I'm doing right now is I am filtering or not filtering, but I'm viewing my closet by what just came in. And the reason for that is because I'm trying to scroll down to like some of my oldest listings. And then I want to show you how easy it is to list or to relist. And I think it makes sense to relist your oldest listings, right? Because those are the most stale. They've been around for forever. And if no one has bought them yet, I mean, chances are they're just not going to do it at this point, unless you again, relist it, or maybe you've got to make some adjustments to the um, listing itself. So we're going to go through this together, this process together. I'm not going to go to like the very oldest listing because 
I'm going to have to scroll for quite some time. So at this point, okay, anything that hasn't sold. Here we go. Disney Parks Gaston Cheers t-shirt. I got this at like a Goodwill or something. And I'm going to click on edit. And if I scroll all the way down, it allows me to either copy the listing or delete the listing. I'm going to press copy and it tells you this will take you to a copy of this listing title, copy Disney products, yada, yada, yada. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So now what happens is it's going to create a new listing for you. But at the beginning of the listing title, it says copy dash and then it has as much of your listing as it was able to keep, but it cuts off the end of it because they had to fit the word copy and the dash at the beginning. I have seen some people list stuff in their Poshmark closet and it says copy dash and then the rest of their original listing title. They never bothered to delete the part that says copy, which I think is a big no-no. You're wasting characters. People are going to see that and be kind of confused. They're not going to know if they want to purchase that from you. So you want to make sure that you edit the listing and get rid of where it says copy. And then you have you know, the portion of your original listing that they were able to keep. So I have Disney Parks guest on Cheers to Me graphic. I want to say graphic t-shirt and maybe I can fit the size. What size is this? Large. So since I have one more character left, I'm going to go ahead and put an L. Done. So now I can look at my description and see if there's anything that I want to edit. Um, sometimes when I'm doing this, I find really funny or maybe not so funny, but detrimental spelling errors and things like that. Um, but I think this looks pretty good. So I am going to press done. I might edit the price, but honestly on this, I think I'm just going to leave it at 18 and see if people want to send me offers. So now I'm going to press next. I'm, I usually share my stuff to Pinterest. I don't share to Facebook because I feel like then my Facebook would just be crazy. And now it's been relisted in such a short amount of time. There was no copying or pasting. I didn't have to like take screenshots of all the pictures and, you know, put them back into a new listing or anything like that. It's just all of the information from my first listing cross-posted into a new listing. I know I have things in my Poshmark closet that have been listed for like over two years. So it's probably about time that I relist those items. I personally have always hated relisting, but this new feature from Poshmark is a game changer. Finally, we're gonna be talking about cross-listing as a great tool for resellers to get their items in front of more eyes and hopefully make more sales that way. So if you don't know what cross-listing is, it basically means that you are selling on multiple platforms. So you don't just sell on Poshmark, you don't just sell on eBay, but you take your listings from Poshmark and you cross list them or you cross post them to other platforms as well. And again, the benefit of doing this is you are getting your items in front of more eyes because you're putting them on different platforms. One thing that I think is really helpful when it comes to cross listing, and this is something that I stole from Kathy from Ginger Marvin. I swear I am forever stealing ideas from her, but at least I'm crediting her, right? So in one of her videos, she had talked about how she has a spreadsheet and in her spreadsheet she has the listing and then she has all of the different platforms that she sells on and she keeps track of whether or not each listing is cross-listed onto each of those different platforms genius my issue is I have all of these different listings, but I don't know if they're on all the different platforms, specifically some of my older listings from Poshmark. So that is a practice that I want to start doing because the beauty of that is even if something has been listed for forever for you on Poshmark, if it's not on eBay yet, the second you cross list it to eBay, that's a new listing on eBay. Even though it seems stale to you, it's brand new to eBay. So let's say you're not in the position where you have a lot of new inventory coming in. Maybe rather than focusing on new listings on your existing platform, you can focus on getting those existing listings onto other platforms and there'll be brand new listings to those new platforms. So by creating a spreadsheet where you can track where all of your listings are listed, you can figure out if there are maybe some listings that are not on specific platforms and by cross-listing them to those platforms, 
you have new listings up essentially. Now you already know that I'm going to talk about List Perfectly because <laughs> List Perfectly is my cross listing software of choice. There are others out there. I know that Vendu is one that a lot of people are very loyal to as well. I personally have not tried Vendu, so I can't speak to Vendu versus List Perfectly. List Perfectly was just the first one that I tried. I fell in love with it and I am just a ride or die List Perfectly girl until the end. What List Perfectly allows you to do, and this is why they're such a game changer is they allow you to select a listing from your platform of choice and then bulk cross post them to all of the other platforms that you sell on. My summer listing challenge goal for cross listing is to cross list 10 items from Poshmark to eBay, Kitizen, and Mercari. And for me to do that using List Perfectly, it, it honestly only takes about 15 to 20 minutes of my day, which is not bad at all, especially if you were to compare that to me trying to manually, you know, copy and paste all the information and cross post it that way. If you want to try cross listing and using List Perfectly yourself, I do have a coupon code. It's Becky Park. And by using this, you actually get to save 30% off of your first month with List Perfectly. And List Perfectly is partnering with me for the summer listing challenge. And they have graciously donated some prizes for those participating in the summer listing challenge. Three lucky winners will win one free month of List Perfectly, which is amazing. And that's not just to those who are new to List Perfectly. If you are already a List Perfectly member, by participating in the Summer Listing Challenge, you are also eligible to get a refund off of one month of List Perfectly. So just another great reason to join the Summer Listing Challenge. And speaking of List Perfectly, here is a short interview with Alex from List Perfectly. Hey everyone, so I have with me right now the Chief Marketing Officer from List Perfectly. Her name is Alex. Hi, Alex. How are you? Hi, Becky. So good and so glad to be here. Yay. Awesome. Okay. So first of all, I just want you to tell us a little bit from someone who works at List Perfectly. Tell us a little bit about it and why people should definitely consider, you know, using List Perfectly as a resource when it comes to cross-posting. For sure. So I think by now everyone knows that List Perfectly is the number one way to cross post your listing. So if you are selling on one marketplace and want to be on the others, or if you are selling on multiple marketplaces and need some help, I mean, I know how that is, right? Mm -hmm. So List Perfectly is the best way to do that. And we're supporting about nine marketplaces right now, about to be 10. It's awesome. just such a great way to save time, make more money. And as everyone knows, more marketplaces means more customers, means more business. So anyone can tell you that's Atlas perfectly. It does pay for itself. And I can tell you that as a actual reseller, because I found this perfectly as a seller myself and fell in love with it. So it, it's always paid for itself for me. And I know for so many others as well. Um, and I do want to make sure that people kind of know how it works. Mm -hmm. So it's not magic. It's not like a magic button that you click and boom, you're everywhere. Mm -hmm. We just help you by clicking the list perfectly button and opening up windows to each of the marketplaces with all the information already filled out for you. So you save so much time when you're actually on that page listing mm -hmm. and then you press post and you're up on the marketplaces in for me maybe no, um, no less than 20% of the time. So yeah. it's really saving me um, actually 20 minutes per listing for me because I'm on five marketplaces. Five marketplaces, wow. And um, I know that one of the coolest features I think of List Perfectly that you guys came out with, and one thing I appreciate so much too about List Perfectly is they are always rolling out with new features. And they're, like you said, always rolling out with new marketplaces. The biggest game changer for me, and I think I've been using List Perfectly since like the beta days, but the biggest game changer was the bulk cross listing, that tool. And I know that that's only available, right? If you're like in the mid and top, I forget what they're called. If you want to speak to that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So you can cross post unlimited items with any of our plans, but it's just how many can you do at a time? Mm -hmm. So with the simple plan, you can do one by one, but with the business or pro plan, so the middle or top tier mm -hmm. plan, you can cross post actually unlimited at, the, yeah. at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, the most we've ever seen someone do is 150 at once. That's ridiculous. I, I know. I personally like to do them in batches of 10, okay. uh, sometimes batches of 15 if I'm really yeah. feeling crazy that day, but um, you can do bulk cross posting with the okay. business or pro plan. Yeah. Yeah. I do batches of five. Um, just because my computer is kind of slow and I just feel like it'll kill it if I try to do more than that at a time. But, um, and that's like, it feels manageable to me as like five, you know, so awesome. 
Okay, so you have been with List Perfectly, not for that long, but um, if you could just maybe talk to us a little bit about who is at List Perfectly in terms of like, who are the people who created it and why? Like what was yeah. their thinking behind coming up with this resource? And um, I think it's always really cool to know, you know, kind of the backstory and who's involved. Absolutely. Well, I have to say that I absolutely love the other people, uh, Atlas Perfectly, all of them, but especially the founders, Clara and Amanda. Mm -hmm. They are such an inspiration and they are the kinds of people that will do the hard nitty gritty tasks, even though they are the founders, like they care so much. I care a lot, but they care more than anybody, you know, that yeah. each and every single person on this perfectly has the best experience mm -hmm. and they have a really great story. So I'll definitely dive into that. Um, they are co-founders, two female co-founders, which I think awesome. just, of course, like an added benefit of already the great service that is this perfectly is that it is women owned. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the other competitors are not women owned. So that's a really nice uh, purpose for me to be working at the company. And I know for so many of the members as well. And Amanda actually has a background as a Marine. So she is a bad ass. I know uh -huh. she's so cool. And she's had many different entrepreneurial ventures kind of throughout her awesome. career. Um, but then she met, and of course, reselling is one of them. Mm -hmm. And Clara was actually a lawyer in Argentina before moving to the U S. So she's a total badass as well. Mm -hmm. And she also fell in love with reselling and Clara and Amanda happened to meet actually at a bar just very randomly and they uh, started working together to kind of double down on their reselling. Mm -hmm. And Clara developed over time carpal tunnel and it made it really, really hard for her to list, which was her kind of part of the job. Mm -hmm. So Amanda developed List Perfectly for Clara, not thinking, oh, it's a business, Gosh. just because Amanda has that background in tech. And Clara literally couldn't like spend that much time listing. Mm -hmm. She couldn't take 20 minutes per listing. She needed it to be five, just like I, you know, that's my time. So she needed that. And uh, Amanda built it for her. They started talking to other friends at eBay, kind of just showing them like, oh, look what we built. And mm -hmm. it was just, that was the end, right? That's when List Perfectly was born. And I think that's so beautiful that it wasn't, you know, how do we start this business? It was just, yeah. we're resellers. We need help. This is hard. And I actually can't do this. So we need yeah. a solution. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It seems so organic the way that it came about. And like you said, like it does feel very much like even though they're the founders, they're still very much involved in things like customer service or just like wanting to listen to their customers about what our wants and needs are, um, even though they come from these really cool backgrounds, which I did not know. That's really cool to hear about kind of what their past lives were like, you know, so totally. awesome. Okay, and you spoke to this a little bit, but um, there are a few other cross-listing softwares out there. Why list perfectly? Awesome, great question. So first of all, just in terms of how it works, I think List Perfectly works the best. There are, you know, are a lot of other options that are doing it prettier maybe, um, but as far as like how does it work, List Perfectly works the best. That's just, for me, I discovered that as a reseller, I've tried all the other options. This one is the one that works. Yeah. Um, also, of course, we have way more marketplaces than any of the other platforms. So I think that that's really important because more marketplaces, more business, more money, and of course, more return on that monthly subscription investment that you're making in any of these. Yeah. Um, we're always adding new marketplaces, actually one a month. Next month is Shopify. After that, Instagram. And we keep listening to you guys. We have a uh, weekly webinars that you can tune into with the founders of List Perfectly and tell them, hey, I want this marketplace. Mm -hmm. But again, we're adding them on a monthly basis, which no one else is doing. Mm -hmm. And I think finally, bulk cross-posting on uh, the other leading competitor, you can only do 10 at a time. And on ours, as I was saying, some people do up to 150 at a time. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like, I want to know what their browser oh, looks yes. like. You know, it's just like little dots at that point across the top. I know. Crazy. <laughs> Okay, so you spoke to this. I'm so sorry. Okay, I just got an Apple Watch and I don't know how to like do anything with it. So it's just like bing bonging and ignore. Um, so, oh my gosh, stop that. Okay, so you spoke to this, but I think one of the really cool things too about List Perfectly is the community aspect. So can you talk to us a little bit about not just the resource of the software itself, but the other resources you kind of talked about the webinar. I know you guys are also really active on both Instagram and Facebook. So maybe if you just want to talk about, it's almost like a culture or like a movement. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, so maybe speak to that a little bit too and why that's valuable for um, sellers. 
For sure. So one thing I can tell you is everyone that is a member of Was Perfectly will tell you that our customer service is next level and they've never experienced anything like it, not just for resale, but just in their everyday lives of all the companies that they are, you know, contributing to or uh, shopping from. So I think the community aspect is one of the best things about this perfectly. First of all, we do have those webinars every Tuesday and Thursday. You can talk face to face with the founders of this perfectly. Mm -hmm. You can tell them how your experience is, what you want, um, ask them questions and get help directly from like the founders themselves. That is something that I'm so proud that we do. Um, in addition to that, we do have a Facebook community group, which is roughly 3000 people strong. So it is very much a community. People post about questions they have, like, um, you know, has anyone noticed any trends on Poshmark and the whole community will chime in. So it's not just about this perfectly. It's also just about reselling in general and having that resource. And there are people in there that are just getting started on this perfectly or thinking about joining and haven't joined yet. And they are using that as a place to ask questions about this perfectly so that they can make that decision for themselves. So if you're just looking to connect or you're still thinking about this perfectly, I highly recommend the Facebook group, which we'll link in this video. Yeah. Um, and of course we have our Instagram, you know, we're doing lots of fun things on there. Always giving back is kind of the, I guess, ethos behind our Instagram. Yeah. So every Friday we do a mystery box giveaway with inventory like Ralph Lauren, Adidas, Nike, Burberry. So um, you can win inventory. We know that that's such a hard yeah. point right now, especially during the pandemic. So we're doing mystery boxes every single Friday. Uh, we do shout outs. Like we give opportunities to feature you guys as the users of this perfectly on our community slides we do like different little games that you can screenshot add to your story and then we'll repost you mm -hmm. and of course we have our super seller sessions which are interviews with the top resellers in the world um, giving you tips tricks and no bs advice straight from them so we're always doing something to make the voices of the community louder and just amplify those voices Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's such a beautiful thing when a company is willing to spend time building community, you know, because I know a lot of resellers, especially if that's their full time job, especially for like stay at home moms or people who just are not able to like get out and do much even pre pandemic. I think community is something that people are always speaking about and how they miss having coworkers or they miss having people that they can, um, you know, just kind of run ideas by it, whatever. And so I think was perfectly has done a really good job of that. So kudos to you guys. Last question. Um, why do you, Alex, love working for List Perfectly? You kind of touched on this already, but yeah. I mean, this is how we'll end. Well, I think it's very rare that you get the opportunity to actually be a part of a company that you just discovered as a customer. So oh, it was very natural for me to like fall in love with this perfectly because they actually helped me clear my grandma's garage, my poor grandma of all of my, you know, piles and piles of clothing that I had no idea how I was going to get through. And when I discovered them and I saw that I was able to not just, you know, move inventory, but actually make so much more money. Yeah. I fell in love with it right then and there. And so for me to then join the company and be a part of a female powered team, that's just been extremely empowering. And I will say just as bosses, Clara and Amanda are the nicest people. They encourage me every single day. Um, they give me the constructive you know, feedback that I need, but it's never criticism. And I just really admire how they run their company. So, um, you know, there's no two better people to support than to amazing, empowering female founders who are also now as part of my job, right? Every time someone joins us perfectly and is happy, like I just made their business better. Yeah. So it's just this long trickle down of giving back, you know, yeah. at perfectly. And that's why I love it so much. Awesome. Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't let everyone know that I do have an affiliate link that you can use. My coupon code is just Becky Park and you can save 30% off of your first month. The best thing too, I think about List Perfectly is you can try it risk-free because if you don't love it, which I don't understand how you wouldn't, but if you don't, you get all your money back, right? Is that true? You yeah, you have three days for your full money back or up to 20 cross posts. So awesome. try it risk-free. Yeah. Um, all you have to do is contact the team if you decide it's not for you, but like Becky said, you're going to love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it honestly is a no brainer. And I think too, like, you know, Alex said earlier, it is not a, you know, a press of a button and you're everywhere. It, it does take some like learning how to use it, especially because they just keep improving and they keep adding cool features. But if you weren't there from like the ground up, like learning how to do some of that stuff, it might seem a little complicating, but then 
once you figure it out, you're just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. those features are there for a reason, you know, but it mm-hmm. might take a you know day or two to just kind of like wrap your head around it. It took me two days, but after two days, I was just in and good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. So definitely if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Um, I will definitely try to help you out as much as I can, but list perfectly has been a game changer for my reselling business. And I think it will be for you too. So Alex, thanks again so much for being here and we will finish out this video right now. All right, guys, that is going to do it for my video on how to grow in consistency as a reseller in order to have more consistent sales. If you can focus on those three things, if you can focus on listing, relisting and cross listing and make those three things a non-negotiable part of your day i can almost guarantee that you are going to see more consistency in your sales as well i'd love to hear from you what your tips are on being more consistent as a reseller regarding these three tasks if you're interested in signing up for the summer listing challenge make sure to check out the google form and the facebook group down below thank you guys so much for hanging out with me i hope you learned something today and if you did make sure that you hit that like button i'll see you guys tomorrow to talk about batch working Bye. I wanted to talk really quickly about today's prospects for the summer listing challenge. I'm honestly a little bit stressed out because it's already like five o'clock, I want to say, and I have not taken any pictures. I have zero pictures in my phone because I used everything that I had pictures of um, yesterday for my 20 new listing. So I need to do a bunch of uh, pictures today, but I also want to like get ahead because this week is my daughter's birthday week. Her birthday is on Friday. And so because of COVID, we are kind of spreading out the birthday celebrations for the different people that she wants to celebrate with. So it's like each day we're doing something with someone else. And so I really don't have a lot of time each day to, you know, take 20 pictures here and then 20 pictures there. So I want to try and take as many pictures as I can today. I also need to edit a video and there's just a lot going on. So I'm a little stressed, but I'm going to try and get ahead with taking pictures if I can. Um, and the reason why I haven't even started and it's already 5 p.m. I'm going to show you. Hold on. I'm going to move back so you can really see this in all of its glory. <laughs> but um, we just bought this third shelf right here, this like shelving unit. We only had these two and we only had it go up to like this rack here. So like this top rack didn't exist. So it's just really exciting to have a little bit more storage we also didn't have um stuff up there and now i'm going to be able to i mean i already have like four extra bins i think four to six maybe it's six i have six extra bins because of this setup and then i can also put like bins down here but the best part is like i can put stuff that needs to be listed um in these bins so that they're not just like hanging out on the floor in ikea bags and I finally got literally every single thing that I have photographed and listed. I have it all inventoried. So that feels so good. Um, we are definitely working on cleaning the space up a little bit better. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to, it's still a little bit messy here, as you can see, we're still working on it, but I kind of organized my like packing station and stuff better. Although there's literally like coffee and um, I got like another one of these little like plastic drawer things because I only had the one it's like in the corner over there right now there's three on the table but I'm only going to use two and one of them um was just like stuffed to the brim with a bunch of stuff a lot of it is like planner related you can see like all of my planners and stickers and dumb planner stuff up there so I'm gonna try to get a little bit more organized on the desk itself but oh my goodness like this is a dream come true and then right here I, this is where I'm going to take pictures from now on and I think it's actually going to work better than this space where I was taking pictures because as you can see there are these skylights but sometimes they just made the garments look kind of weird I don't know so like even now you can see the light right here just kind of hitting unevenly so I think it's going to actually work out really nicely to take pictures over here and I'm going to have this bin here at all times where I can put stuff that's been photographed and that'll be like the bin of stuff that needs to get inventoried that fan is you know easy to move but I'm excited so that's what I spent basically the whole morning and early afternoon doing and now I get to um, edit my video and then take pictures today I was able to take my pictures Earlier in the day, I only took 18, so right now I'm going to take pictures of two more things, and then I have them all drafted, so now I just need to um, get on my computer and actually list them. It is like, what time is it? 
it's like 11.05, so hopefully I'll get it all done by midnight. That would be amazing. And I think that's all I have to do tonight. And then tomorrow I'm gonna try to take more pictures if I can. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But that's the update. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out these 20 listings and I have to do my eBay relistings, so that's what I'll do. Yesterday I did 29 eBay relistings and today we'll see how many there are. I'll do them when I get back in bed because that's the thing I can do in bed. Okay, bye.